Of course I know it's early. But one team has already impressed me, and it's not even April. You are locked on MLB. Your daily MLB podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Hello, baseball fans. Wow, where did my voice go? Hello, baseball fans, and welcome to Locked On MLB, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team every day. This is the daily podcast. We talk about all of Major League Baseball. I am yours, Paul Francis Sullivan. Please call me. Where's my lower third? There it is. You can call me Sully. I've been a baseball podcaster for well over a decade. I've done a lot of different stuff, but I've been so, so happy to be part of of the Lockdown Podcast Network for now, which is the beginning of my sixth season. Huh? That's a a Senate term that I've been here at the Lockdown Podcast Network. You can follow us at Lockdown MLB Pods on Twitter or whatever the hell it's called now, or on Instagram. I am your pal, Sully. I'm at Sully Baseball on Twitter, Sully Baseball Podcast on Instagram. And if you are indeed someone who's been listening to us all year long, all day long, every day, please put that hashtag everyday Sully When you post or you respond, and that way I know who's listening to us. I get an idea who is here, who is there. Uh, Some games are already starting. I love this time of the year when I'm doing a show, but there's a game going on. And so uh, it's all pretty cool. It's all pretty great. And let's let's just get right into it because, first of all, let's go to the trivia question. Remember we did the trivia question the other day where I said, before we get too hung up on how a team's doing here or how doing there early on, I pointed out that probably the single greatest team that I ever saw, or at least the most complete team I ever saw, was the 1998 New York Yankees. There were better players at each position, but the depth of that team was just off the charts. And they went on to win 114 games. They only lost two postseason games. They swept a very good San Diego Padres team. People forget how good that Padres team was, and the Yankees swept through them. And They started off, how did they start off? And a bunch of you uh, responded correctly. Uh, Scott Horsemeyer said uh, the 1998 Yankees began the season one and four. And I remember that there was some people calling it WFAN. You're right, Scott. They start off losing four of their first five games. And remember, at that point, Joe Torre was not the sainted Joe Torre yet. The Yankees won the World Series in 96 when he took over after Showalter skedaddled um, because it was basically George fired Showalter. Torrey came in. Everyone called him Clueless Joe. They won the World Series against Atlanta, overmatched Atlanta. You know, they they over the, the Yankees were so much worse than Atlanta, but somehow the Yankees won that series. New York went bananas. The next year, the Yankees lost the division series to Cleveland. And going into 98, they got off to a slow start, and a lot of people were calling up WFAN saying, we got to get rid of this guy, Tory. Can we bring in Showalter? Can we bring in Lou Pinella? We need someone to have some fire under this team. And how that work out for you? They went on to win the next three World Series. They were in the World Series four out of the next – or was it five out of the next six years, I think it was? Yeah. Yeah, five out of the next six years winning three – in a row. So I think it went pretty well. I think Yankee fans did okay with Joe Torre here. Hey, by the way, think about doing okay. Uh, For those of you who are new, I do a thing called who owns baseball, where I figure out who the best player of the day was at the end of the year, we do a tally and uh, yeah, we had some fun. So the question is who owned baseball for yesterday? Well, let's find out. So who owned baseball for March 29th, 2024, Matt Chapman homered twice Added another hit. The Giants beat San Diego 8-3. to Oswaldo Cabrera drove in three runs with his four hits. Yankees came back to beat Houston 7-1. to George Kirby was brilliant as he blanked the Red Sox 1-0, striking out 11 along the way. And Bobby Miller was fantastic as the Dodgers doubled up St. Louis 6-3, to earning half wobs, including J.D. Davis in front of virtually nobody in Oakland. But the A's lost 6-4. to to Cleveland. Nick Pavetta was fantastic for the Red Sox, striking out 10, but got saddled with a 1-0 loss. Fernando Tatis Jr. had two home runs of the Padres' 8-3 loss to the Giants. And Zach Wheeler held the mighty Braves scoreless over six innings, 
but the Phillies bullpen collapsed in a 9-3 final. They all own baseball. I'm Sully, host of Locked On MLB. So I'm going to leave those shorts. That's part of the short that I posted on the YouTube page. I'm going to be doing those shorts. I'm trying to do, I'll try to do them every day. If I miss a day, you're going to have to forgive me. But I'm going to try to post two owns baseball and video every day uh, as one of those under one minute shorts. So um, check that out. And by the way, thanks so much for all of you who've been watching the In Memoriam video. Uh, we're up to 11,000 on that. Very happy. Hey, I know it's early. It's uh, it's not even April yet. Tomorrow's not even April yet. But I'm already impressed by how one team is done. And I have to give a shout out to the wonderful comedian Nicole Corcolis, who I've known for many, many years. She's a fantastic comic and a rabid Yankee fan and loves to needle me about the Yankees. I love to needle her about the Red Sox. And I sent her an email today saying... I am going to do a positive podcast about the New York Yankees. And she said, dedicate it to me. And so I am. I know it's very early, but here's the deal. I've watched a lot of baseball. I've been watching baseball pretty regularly since 1979. That's the preview for the 1979 uh, Sports Illustrated issue. And I've come to the conclusion, I'm not the first one to do this, but it's it becomes clear. You cannot get too excited about wins or losses, and you can mainly have to think about things in series. If you have a three- or four-game series, if you have a four-game series, try to split it. If you got a three-game series, take two out of three. If you win the first two, go for the sweep or go for the victory. There are ins and outs. You can win 15 to nothing one game and get no hit the next. That's the way baseball is. That's the ebbs and flows of it. So if you want to be a winning team, if you want to be above five, you want to be like a 90 win team, you want to be a playoff team, a lot of times it boils down to this. The best teams in all of baseball are going to lose 50 games out of 162. The worst teams, except for like one or two in baseball history, the worst teams you're going to see are going to win 50 games along the way. So there's about 100 games you know your team's going to win and they're going to lose. So it's those 62 games in the middle where it could bounce either way that is the difference between the Rockies losing 100-some-odd games or the Rangers winning the World Series. It's those 62 games in the middle. And along the way, you're going to have some Keith Grinder games. Games going, we had that in our hands. How did we lose it? And you're going to have some dodge bullet games. We go like, oh, my God, I we had no business winning that. And for a team like the New York Yankees, who are who had a disappointing season last year and have a huge, huge amount of pressure on this team because they have Juan Soto for a guaranteed one year. And you know Scott Boris wants to get his revenge after this last you know, this last winter, he wants to have him out and having the be the, the auction for Soto go through the roof. So the Yankees know they only have one year with Soto guaranteed. And they know the first third of this season, they do not have their ace. Garrett Cole is the best pitcher in the American League since DeGrom is injured. And when you took a look at the schedule, you saw, oh, my God. They are going to Houston, a house of horrors, whether it's legit or banging a can or getting a buzzer. No matter where you do it, Houston is a house of horrors for the New York Yankees. And they're going to go into their yard. They are going to go into their house. They are going to go pee on their rug and come in and say, you're going to start your season without Garrett Cole? That's what they face with. And for the first bunch of innings of the game one and two, it looked like men versus boys. The Astros got off to a huge lead in game one. And the Yankees kept loading the bases and loading the bases and not getting in a run. And Verdugo grabs it a double play. They get out of this. And in both games, the Yankees looked overmatched for the first half of both of those games. And Carlos Rodon, who has to have a turnaround season, was laboring like crazy. He only let up one run in the start, but I think he threw 700 pitches. 
I may have that wrong. And in game one, Nestor Cortez just looked bad for the first few innings. And so those are two games you have to take a look at. Go like, well, no shame in losing those games because of all the things that I mentioned above. But guess what? We're going to break down a little bit about why their wins, even though it's early, are really important. The season's about to start, and I just bought tickets to see the Red Sox play the Angels in Anaheim. And how did I buy my tickets? I got them through game time. Game time is the fast and easiest way to buy tickets for all the baseball, hockey, basketball, music, comedy, theater events near you with killer last-minute deals, all-in prices, view from the seats, and their best price guarantee. Game time takes the guesswork out of buying tickets. They're obsessed with finding you ways to save money. The game time is deals right up to the start of event or even an hour after it starts in case you're going to a Dodger game. It's the place to find last-minute seats. Find exclusive flash deals and sponsor deals on tickets for football, basketball, hockey, baseball, concerts, comedy, and more. Zone deals. They got them. You pick the section. Game time picks the seats. You get big savings. And with game time guarantee, which means you get the best price, if you find tickets in the same section and row for less, game time will credit you 110% of the difference. What? Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On to get twenty bucks off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account, redeem the code L O C K E D O N for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, the lowest prices. Do you know what they are? They're guaranteed. Here's a quick note and a thing to ask you. Are you watching Fox Sports or ESPN on your TV all day? You have to turn down the volume with all that shouting. Make the switch to Locked On Sports Today, a free 24-7 sports streaming channel programmed for you to bring the best stories and the biggest stories without all the screaming. Because, you know, your pal Sully never screams. <laughs> Locked On Sports Today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news. Streaming 24-7 on the free Amazon Fire TV channels at part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, where it's your team every day. Yes, I know. I shouted a lot in that first segment. I shouted during that ad read. What do you want from me? Here's something to think about. At the end of the year, when we get to September into early October, there's always a moment when these races are just compressed. It's They're, they're just absolutely smashed together. And a game here, a game there, a ball dropped here, a, a, a something here, that all seems to matter. And you're just trying to scratch some of those wins back. You try to claw and you're seeing how a game could separate a team that goes to the world series, like the diamondbacks last year and the Cubs who play, who, who were out of it. You know, every year you see you know, the, the Mariners at one point were in first place by themselves in September An extra game here or there. The Mariners are in the postseason. Instead, they missed out, and the team that they just squeaked a little bit behind went on to win the World Series. Those games here and there matter. And at the end of the year, you're desperately crawling for them, which is one reason why you got to win these games early. If you have games you have no business winning early, then that's exactly what the Yankees do. It did in these first couple of games. They had no business winning either one of these games, and they did. And if anyone thinks that's me slighting the Yankees, I'm doing the opposite. That's what championship caliber teams do. They went in without their ace, being outplayed, leaving runners on base left and right, and then looking up at the end of the game, we're like, we got a shot at this. And you saw they get some big hits, and you saw that the Houston Astros bullpen collapsed the way they did, and suddenly the Astros – Really played. I mean, the, the the other day was a tight game right to the end. Yesterday, I mean, the final score was seven to one, and it never seemed like it was seven to one. It never did. Just it felt like the Astros were in control of the whole game, except by the time they got to the seventh, it was only one nothing Houston, and just errors and walks. And I mean, a Taylor Scott couldn't throw a strike to save his life. 
you know, they got a hit by pitch to load the bases, another walk to bring in the go ahead run, walk to Volpe, walk to Wells, hit by pitch Torres, walk to Soto. You know, in that inning, in the seventh inning, the Yankees got one hit and a double play by Aaron Judge and wound up taking the lead. And then you just saw sloppy plays. You saw people being thrown out. You saw errors like crazy. And the Yankees took a, a one nothing deficit to a 7-1 victory in a game they had no business winning. And the day before, Juan Soto showed that he's a superstar, not just with his bat, but with his glove. In back-to-back games, he made terrific defensive plays throughout the tying run at the plate in the ninth inning uh, in the opener and made a diving catch and a critical part of the game yesterday. So the Yankees have now walked in and go, hey, we took the first two games in Houston. They have a tiny bit of a swagger. And again, without their ace and not necessarily getting a great game out of Judge, that they were able to do that. And if you said, okay, you don't get Cole, but you you get to use Carlos Rodon, Nick Birdie, Luke Weaver, Victor Gonzalez, Caleb Ferguson, and Clayton Beater. That's not exactly Glavin to Maddox to Smoltz. And yet they pulled it off. Get, the Astros got a great performance out of Christian Javier and got some great defense at some points, but alas, the Yankees pulled it out. These are two wins they don't have to get later on when they're in full strength and not going into Houston. That's an impressive pair of wins that they don't have to get later on. And remember these two games if the Yankees are battling for a playoff spot down the stretch. So remember they won those games in Houston that if they had lost – there wasn't a soul, not even Nicole Corcolas or Stacy Gotsoulias would have something to say. What is it about all the people I know who are uh, have Greek last names who are big Yankee fans? I digress. Another game which, again, there's going to be a, probably a big dogfight for the top of the National League East. And give credit to the Atlanta Braves winning a game yesterday that looked like was over. Zach Wheeler of Philadelphia is a terrific pitcher through six shutout innings yesterday. And, you know, despite the fact that Spencer Strider pitched well, he w- he threw way too many pitches in five innings. But it looked like, oh, man, this is just going to be the Phillies' day. And remember, a lot of people felt the Phillies' bullpen had greatly improved. Well, there was no sign of that yesterday. Matt Strom was awful. Alvarado was horrific that they took a game which was 2 nothing. It was 2 Nothing Philadelphia going into the seventh. Atlanta took advantage of some sloppiness to tie it in the seventh and then put a touchdown up there in the eighth, nine to three. Now, again, there's enough time for Houston to regroup and there's enough time for Philadelphia to regroup. Yes, the losses aren't as significant, but the wins are. I know that sounds weird, but... It's a big thing if you're like, hey, we're on the visiting turf and we pulled games out of our butts against good teams, teams with World Series images dancing in their head, and we're able to pull those wins out. That's impressive. And that's something that those are wins they don't have to get later on. So color me impressed Yankees who are not at full strength right now against a good Houston team that a lot of people think are going to go back to the World Series. I don't. I'm not picking them, but if they got in, would you be surprised? I didn't think so. But good work for the Yankees and good work for the Atlanta Braves. And by the way, bunts are great. Stolen bases are great. Those are things that I love in baseball. And the fact that part of the chaos that took place yesterday in the game between uh, uh, the Yankees and the Astros was chaos that happened with a bunt going down that's why i love bunt plays it creates chaos chaos is fun chaos is better than walking chaos is better than station to station baseball i love to see havoc on the base paths people running you know running to pick up the ball and throw it and being out of position that's when chaos can happen and nothing's better than that so good on the braves and good on the yankees i don't necessarily root for either one of those teams, but good on them for showing a little bit of, well, let's just say it, guts early on. 
Hey, fans of Daily Fantasy Sports, do I have a place for you? Prize Picks, it's the easiest and most exciting way to play Daily Fantasy Sports. This isn't you playing thousands of other players. You can pick more than or less than on a two to six player stat projection and watch the winnings roll in. This is the ideal time to make your picks in basketball, college, or the NBA. You want to play alongside some of Prize Picks' favorite players like Mikil or Sugar Sean O'Malley? You can find community plays under the Promos tab of the app to view entries for some of the biggest names in the Prize Picks community each week. Now, I'm going to play this week, and I have De'Aaron Fox of the Sacramento Kings. He's going to get 20 points. And then, you know what? I think Kevin Durant is going to pull down 10 rebounds. Download the app today and use code Locked on MLB for a first deposit match up to $100. Once again, download the app today and use the code Locked on MLB for a first deposit match up to $100. Prize picks. Pick more. Pick less. It's that easy. And Locked On has launched the first ever National Sports 24-7 street, streaming channel on YouTube. Sorry about that. And now it's available on the Amazon Fire TV in the free Fire TV channels app. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7 covering the top sports stories of the day with local experts of Locked On plus our national shows covering every league. Find Locked On Sports Today now available on the free Fire TV's channel app. So, you know, a uh, bunch of big games the other day and... While it's early in the season, there's a couple of games that you look at and you go, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Like, uh, I was doing a, you know, as, as some of you know, I, I'm a teacher full time. And I was on a field trip when the games were starting on Thursday. And I saw Mike Trout homered in the first inning on Thursday afternoon. I thought, oh, wow, that's great. He's back. And then I saw that the they were one hit through the first six innings that one hit was the Mike Trout homer and they just were bombarded and lost and you're just like oh god this 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 Angels team is going to be just dreadful and then there was a moment when I saw that the Rockies and the Diamondbacks were playing a game and it was pretty close after like two or three innings I walked they flipped over the Giants and I went back and I saw that the uh, Diamondbacks were up by 15 or something crazy. I, I, it was just, it, they had put up 12, 13, 14 runs in one inning. It was insane. It was absolutely insane. And, and it was like, oh my God. And I'm sure it was a lot of fun for Diamondback fans that day. But if you're a Rockies fan, you saw that. And then the next day they lose seven to three. It's just going to be a very long year in Colorado. It's going to be a very long year in Anaheim. Uh, it's kind of like when you get the returns early at the election. It, that you say, oh, I don't think we're going to win this district. Uh, there's just not enough talent on those teams. I mean, I would love to see these teams, surprise teams, turn it around. I mean, I'm in Southern California. I'd love to see the the Angels do well. But, oh, my God. Oh, my God. It just was uh, – it was not good. It was not good. And then, you know, the A's got whumped in their first game. And then they actually had a good game yesterday. I mean, they lost by two. J.D. Davis, as I mentioned earlier, hit a pair of homers. And a bunch of fans showed up for opening day. That used to be one of the only things you can count on with the the huge A's struggles with their, their attendance is that you knew that everyone was going to show up for opening day. And the fans showed up to the parking lot. It was a big crowd in the parking lot, but they wouldn't go in. And opening day was like just the smallest opening day I think they've ever had or one of them. And then last night, it, the crowd looked like, you know, when a high school team plays in the major league stadium in a tournament or do you know what? Or I expected to see the cardboard cutouts like from the COVID year. And it's just so obvious and that it's just not going to work. The, any talk, well, should they do a lease extension in Oakland? And the answer is no, they can't do it. We've seen this game before. It was the final bunch of years of the Expos in Montreal. And it was a travesty because actually the Expos had a couple of good teams in those final years. Not the last year, but they contended in 02. They contended in 03. They were a wild card contender up until the final month of the season in front of nobody because those fans were like, you're leaving. Why Why are we going to support you? And as big a baseball fan as I am, and I'm going to go to a bunch of A's games this summer, I'm going to be up in the Bay Area, but 
and I actually have already bought some some A's tickets using Game Time, uh, but they weren't hard to get. And I do not blame Oakland fans who think I'm not going to show up. I'm not going to show up. You've already made the decision to leave. Uh, I'm not going to put money in your pocket. I totally understand that. But you then can't stretch this out for a bunch of years. This is just not Major League Baseball. And this is coming for someone. I don't want the A's to leave for personal reasons, for emotional reasons. I understand that the I lived in the Bay Area for a long time. I, it, I think we've proven over the last bunch of generations that the Bay Area is not a two-team market. Because as long as there's been two teams, one of the two teams has been trying to leave. The Giants tried to leave in the 70s. The Giants tried to leave in the 90s. The A's tried to leave in the 70s. The A's have been trying to leave ever since. So, but you can't keep doing this. If you have to have them play in Sacramento, where it's sort of a novelty for the fans in Sacramento, fine. If you have to have them play in um, Salt Lake City, you have to have them play in uh, the Meyer League Stadium in Las Vegas. I still am going to preach this from the highest mountain. Las Vegas is going to be a disaster. If and when they move there, I hope there's success and I'm wrong. And as the guy who was criticizing me about uh, Otani, who said, are you going to be mad enough to admit you're wrong? If the A's are a massive success in Las Vegas, I will admit I was wrong and be thrilled. I just don't see it happening. But we can't do this anymore. It's sad. It's a middle finger to the fans of Oakland. It's a middle finger for Major League Baseball. I'll tell you what I want. If they're, if we can't, even if even if it's just like we're going to have a mild contract extension, kind of like what happened with Montreal those last bunch of years, we just can't do that. This is too sad. You know, you're better off having the novelty of them playing in a minor league stadium than playing in this monstrosity with nobody sitting there. It, it, they rope off seats. It's like exactly what happened in Montreal, where they roped off seats. And even if they got 25, 30,000, there's 30,000 empty seats. It's a shame because going to an A's game is like a carnival. And I, everyone who's a baseball fan, sorry, I just hit my mic. Everyone who's a baseball fan should go to a game in Oakland this year so you can experience that carnival feeling. You can experience the love of those fans who've been kicked in the teeth and keep coming back. But you can't keep kicking a fan base in the teeth and expecting any crowds to be there for 2025 and 2026 at least. We're going to do this two more years? If they had to move, they should have moved to Nashville or Portland. Las Vegas is going to be a disaster, but they can't stay here. This whole move has been a cataclysmic disaster. It's been a how-to, a reverse how-to. Whatever they did, don't do it. Because they're now in a situation where there's no fans in the stadium. They know they're gone, but they have nowhere to play. Good work. You've only had a couple of decades to figure this out. But we can't do this. This has to be the last. You know, at some point, it's like... Someone very near and dear to me, I, I knew both the husband and the wife, and I thought they were a great couple, and they were really great friends, and they truly loved each other. And when things started going badly, I remember thinking, God, I hope they can keep it together, keep it together. And then one day, I remember being with them thinking like, oh, no, no, they they have to go. This ha They have to be apart. And that's the Oakland, city of Oakland and the A's right now. As much as I would love, because when I go to the Bay Area to be able to see a ball game any day, I'm there. They, they, we can't keep doing this. They, you, you've got to, you've got to leave. And our trivia question has to do with teams that leave. If the A's wind up playing in Sacramento, I want nothing more than them to win the World Series in Sacramento. Just so we can have, wow, really? Did Sacramento as a World Series winner? Yeah, before Cleveland did. But the trivia question is this. There have been, one, two, there have been five teams who have won a World Series title in two different cities. Five franchises have won a World Series title in two different cities. And, this, and I'm talking about World Series from the version starting in 1903, not like some tournament back in the 1880s or whatever. 
who was the first team to win a World Series title in two different cities? That's a trivia question for today. Put it right there on Lockdown MLB Pods on Twitter, whatever it's called now, or Instagram. I am your pal, Sully, but Sully Baseball on Twitter, Sully Baseball Podcast on Instagram. Giving the Yankees praise. I hope you're happy, Nicole Corcoralis. This has been Lockdown MLB. I am your host, Paul Francis Sullivan. Please call me Sully.